Hey everyone, welcome back to Search Pulse. Today we are diving into the topic that powers the rapid evolution of railway transport in India, speed control of traction induction motors in the Vande Bharat train using advanced converter system. Sounds technical? Don't worry, by the end of this video you will be riding high on knowledge. But before we start, we would like to apologize to few of our viewers since we couldn't make this video in Hindi. But it's all engineering stuff. I hope you can take help of the captions in the video. So let's hit the tracks. The converter technology or the variable frequency drives control the speed by adjusting the frequency of the supplied voltage. There are two primary methods of control in VFD, scalar control drives and vector control drives. The converter system used in Vande Bharat is vector controlled converter. The same technology is also adopted in all major high speed rail technology like Japanese Shinkansen from N700S series, China's Fuxing trains, France's TGV, Germany's Deutsche Bahn, all of them are using vector control converters. Where are all the other older trains in India like the WAP series and the WAG series engine uses the scalar control converters. Before we get more into the traction converter topic, let's refresh our knowledge on traction induction motor. A traction induction motor has four fundamental operating modes, acceleration, cruising, coasting, and braking. Energy optimal trajectories are determined by optimizing the sequence of the operating modes as well as the corresponding switching points. According to these operating modes, the traction converter needs to adjust the supply so that the torque and speed requirements of the locomotive is met. If we refresh our memory on torque and speed equations of the traction motor will help us to understand the further concepts. Torque is proportional to slip, rotor flux and rotor current. Slip of a motor is the relative difference between synchronous speed which depends on the supply frequency and rotor speed and is responsible for linking stator flux with the rotor windings thus creating the rotor flux which is responsible for magnetizing of rotor and generation of rotor EMF which in turn causes the rotor current to flow in the windings thus creating the torque in the rotor shaft. By the way, stator flux is directly proportional to the supply voltage and supply frequency. Speed is proportional to slip, supply frequency to motor and number of poles. Slip we have already understood a few minutes ago. Supply frequency decides how fast the magnetic flux linking stator and rotor revolves, thus the speed. And finally, lower the number of poles, higher will be the speed. But here's the catch. Number of poles has an impact on the torque of the motor. Lower the poles, lower is the torque. More torque fluctuation and less smooth ride of the locomotive. Now let's get into the two types of speed control methods. Scalar control, also known as the V by F control, is the simpler of the two methods. It works by adjusting the ratio of the voltage to the frequency supplied to the motor to maintain a constant magnetic flux. The primary goal of scalar control is to ensure the strength of the motor's magnetic field remains constant, which results in consistent torque production. The operation of scalar control is relatively straightforward. When the motor is at low speeds, the VFD adjusts the voltage to maintain a consistent ratio with the frequency. As the frequency increases, so does the voltage, thereby maintaining a constant ratio between the two. This method is often implemented in an open loop configuration where no feedback from the motor is used to correct the system's performance. However, closed loop implementation are possible when motor feedback is incorporated, but this adds to the complexity and cost to the system. The simplicity of scalar control makes it cost effective option, especially for applications where precise speed control is not critical. It is commonly used in applications with variable loads that do not require high performance motor control. Speed regulation is typically within a range of 2 to 3% of the motor's rated speed. One of the significant benefits of scalar control is its ability to operate without the need of sophisticated feedback devices, making it a popular choice for controlling multiple motors simultaneously. In contrast to scalar control, vector control, often referred to as field-oriented control, is a more sophisticated method used to control speed and torque of AC motors with greater precision. The fundamental principle of vector control is to treat the motor's stator current as a vector that is split into two components, the magnetizing component and the torque producing component. These two components are controlled independently, allowing for more accurate and dynamic control of the motor. The D-axis current component represents the magnetizing current, while the Q-axis component represents the current responsible for generating torque. By controlling these components separately, vector control maximizes the torque production and optimizes the motor's performance across a wide range of speeds. Unlike scalar control, which operates based on a fixed voltage to frequency ratio, 
Vector control dynamically adjusts the motor's current to ensure that the torque producing component is kept orthogonal to the rotor flux. This results in higher efficiency, especially at low speeds or when the torque is required. Vector control can be implemented in both open loop and closed loop configurations. Choosing between scalar and vector control for VFDs depends on the specific needs of the application. Scalar control is a cost-effective solution for general purpose application with relatively simple speed control requirements, while vector control is ideal for high-performance applications requiring precise torque and speed regulations. The converter system of Vande Bharat is a four-quadrant power converter designed with IGBT and PWM control to ensure regeneration and the power factor to near unity. All previous versions of traction locomotives like the WAP and the WAG series use GTO thyristor-based converters, which offer slower switching cycle compared to the IGBT. The voltage rating of the IGBT is so chosen that at least 25% margin is available after taking into consideration the DC link voltage and voltage jump on account of inductances and capacitances in the circuit. The wheel slip detection and the correction system is an integral part of the control system of the power converters which captures any excessive acceleration differential speed between axles, over speed and any other parameter deemed necessary to maximize addition and minimize wheel slipping and skidding. Each basic unit of Vande Bharat chair car train has four coaches out of which two are motor coaches. Each motor coach has four traction motors and two traction converters mounted under slung of car body. Each traction converter controls two traction motors. Input to converter comes from the transformer kept in adjacent trailer coach. Now let's investigate the high level specifications of the traction converter used in Vande Bharat. We found these details from two sources, one being the specification from OEM which states the rating as shown and the second being the nameplate rating. You can see the specification is single phase input voltage of 950 volts, input current of 639 amps and KVA of 554. Whereas the nameplate KVA rating is 546. The nameplate input voltage ranges from single phase 627 volts to 1140 volts and output is three phase voltage 1430 volts and 205 amps and frequency ranging from 0 to 175 hertz. If you have seen our previous videos of traction motor of Vande Bharat, it was told that the converter needs to give the output power at a frequency of 167.5 Hz to achieve top speed of 160 km per hour. Using the same formula stated in the last video, if we check that the traction inverter output is 175 Hz, then the Vande Bharat can be propelled at 180 km per hour, which is the speed at which Vande Bharat had been tested for. Also, we would try to calculate the power at the output side of the converter root 3 times line voltage and line current gives us 508 kilowatt which if we divide with the kva rating of the converter then we would get 0.92 as the power factor at full load just now we spoke that each traction converter of vande bharat chair car supplies power to two traction motors which roughly matches since the traction motor rating of version 1 vande bharat is 265 kilowatt Moving ahead, if we apply the transformation ratio on the converter input voltage of 950 volts and standard traction supply voltage of 25 kV, we can find the winding ratio of the transformer is 26.3. If applied to the input voltage range given in the nameplate, which is 627 volts to 1140 volts, we can find the fluctuation in the catenary supply voltage is from 16.5 kV to 30 kV. We guess for many of our viewers, several things might have got simpler. If you found this insider look into the technology behind the India semi-high speed train as fascinating, then don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe for more such contents. Also, drop your questions or thoughts in the comments below. We would like to hear from you. Until next time, keep exploring the incredible world of technology. Thanks a lot.